Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another wonderful hoof trimming video. Now let's get to it. This is the cow as she came on the shoot, and I could already tell that she had a major problem. As you can hear, Aaron is trimming the front feet on this cow while I'm starting to work on the back feet. And now we're going to go ahead and trim these hooves and prepare her for a block. Anytime that we see maggots, that means that there's a hole in her hoof somewhere that has necrotic tissue involved. From the swelling in this hoof, I can already tell that the problem is in that top toe of this back left foot. It is pertinent that we have a dry toe to place that block upon, and you'll see in the next scene where we even use a torch to just slightly heat and slightly dry the hoof. As you can tell, the hooves are actually in pretty good condition, but what's underneath this hoof is to be reckoned with. Now you can see we have that bottom toe prepped for a block. We are just going to wave the torch around on it to eliminate any moisture that may be on that toe. Here you can see the hoof tight glue that we are placing a wooden block on that hoof. Now let's get to work. First thing we're going to do is clean out any debris that we can get easily away from that wound before we start seeing where the problem is and where the problem goes. Looking up here at the top of the hoof immediately has me concerned because there is separation at this top hairline. That's a very bad spot to have separation. But even after just one pass, now if you look closely, you can see the maggots starting to come out of this hole. Now maggots aren't always a bad thing. Maggots do eat necrotic tissue and keep it from getting worse. Now that we have seen where the separation is, now I'll we'll take the grinder and thin the margins on this hoof to make it a little easier with the hoof knife. One thing with a hoof like this is this hoof is pretty hard, and I'll explain why. It also makes sense why the maggots are not getting crushed. So this animal has been lame long enough that she has not been putting weight on it. Therefore, she has not been putting weight on the hoof to crush the maggots, and the hoof has not been sitting in real, real sloppy manure because she cannot put it down on the ground while she is walking. In turn, that makes it a prime spot for a fly to land and find a nice juicy hole to lay its eggs and grow these maggots. While these maggots are cleaning some of that dead and necrotic tissue away from the hoof, they are also in there and not allowing the hoof to fully heal. Now once again, we will try to flush some of these maggots out and clean out the area of the hoof where it is separated to allow us to see just how far that separation goes. Now when we are removing separated horn, the thing we look for is to where we can get the knife underneath the horn where it is loose and remove it all the way. Any loose horn that is attached to the hoof but detached from the corium allows for a pinch spot. It allows for either a stone or debris, or in this case sand, to get underneath this hoof and allow the wound to become irritated and not heal. In this video, you will notice it is very repetitive. As for taking off loose horn, thinning the margins, and following the cracks, until we have all of the loose horn removed. At this point, folks, I'm not gonna lie, my skin is crawling. Every time I make another pass with a knife or the grinder, another maggot seems to find its way out of the cracks of this hoof. Once again, folks, you can see we have found the separated horn and we remove it once again. Now is when I start to get concerned because here I'm seeing a little hole that comes through the top of this white line right there and is going up the white line. 
This is very concerning to me because when there is a hole in the bottom, I expect there to be a hole in the top. Now, if you remember back to the start of this video, we saw that that foot was swollen. That is another batch of concern because that tells me that there is infection. Here you can see the crack on the white line where those maggots are squirming around. And now I'm looking at the top of her hoof to see if I can find where the crack comes out through the top. After inspection, she has a massive hole. And this hole from that squish that you just saw there shows me that it is separated all the way through the bone into the top of that hoof. This is especially concerning because at this point, we cannot just repair bone. It is eminent now that this top toe will need to be amputated and that is a veterinary procedure. So I'm going to do the best I can to clean it out. So I will continue to clean out this hoof and prepare it to be wrapped and hopefully the veterinary is able to look at it soon. I would like to point out the fact though that those maggots did do a very good job of keeping that necrotic tissue away from the bottom of this toe, but that is no longer my concern. My concern is that the infection is so deep into this cow's hoof that it has affected that bone. We are almost at the point folks where we have removed enough of the bottom of the sole and have not disturbed the corium to where she is able to at least allow that hoof to drain to where no more infection is possible and hopefully that makes the veterinary's procedure that much easier. Now that we have this foot paired out properly, we'll spray it up, make it as clean as we can and check out the top here to see if we can just keep it clean enough so the veterinarian is able to help this cow out. As you can see, we're applying salicylic acid to this wound. That'll help keep it clean as well. And it'll also promote any start of healing that may be beneficial to this cow's life. So we'll tape it up and it's on to the vet. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.